Hello everybody, Kane here today with another episode of our Fossils and Archaeology Creative Park series type thingamabobber. And today we are building up the Adaphosaurus enclosure, mostly because um, this was for some reason the animal I felt like building an exhibit for today. Not really sure why exactly, but you know, it, I don't know, it seemed like a cool one to do. So, we're doing a bit of a different build for this one, um, which is kind of fun actually. This is, uh, I'm trying to think what exhibit this is most like. I don't think I've built a dinosaur exhibit too much like this, at least recently, not that I can think of. Um, but it's kind of a main building. Actually, it's like, uh, if you've seen the 1.16 zoo, uh, if you've seen that series, if you can think of our Komodo dragon exhibit, where it's got like, well, I mean, obviously it's in the reptile house. So it's got like an indoor section with an indoor part of the exhibit and then a massive outdoor area with like uh, one specific viewing area for it. That is essentially what we're doing here, except it's only one animal and it's on a much larger scale. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the basic idea. Now, unfortunately, due to time constraints, I didn't actually get the interior exhibit done or the inside part of the exhibit done today. Uh, hopefully I'll get that done by next time. Uh, mostly just down to, again, like, I mean, maybe I just need to start recording earlier, or, I don't know, well, I don't even think that's really gonna fix it. These videos just take longer to make than I have time to, to make them, I guess, but whatever. Anyway, anyway, um, yeah, so we're working on the building right now. Uh, I would decide to go for a really green building, because I know, I feel like every time I've built an Adaphosaurus exhibit, which isn't often, I'll have you know, um, I've gone for a much more wetlands kind of build or swampy kind of build and i know like they probably well i think they did live in more wet climates but also in a more arid one i think it just depends on what period of time you're trying to represent uh, and i guess also which dig site you're trying to represent but uh yeah anyway long sciencey boring stuff out of the way um yeah, I decided to go for a wetlands kind of look for this one because I felt like that would be kind of a cool build to do and be a bit different from the Pachycephalosaur enclosure because I didn't want to make two kind of temperate forest exhibits back to back because I felt like that would be kind of boring to look at. Uh, I also had a fun time with this build trying to uh, separate it from the Pachycephalosaur enclosure because it's it's literally right next to it. And I was like, I don't want two, two big exhibits, well, two big exhibits because they're both pretty small in the grand scheme of things. Um, I didn't want two exhibits right off the bat, like, so, you know, not having two main exhibits, you know, right next to the entrance, because I felt like that'd be a little weird, or, you know, it would distract from one or the other. So, we, there's literally only two ways to see this exhibit. There's no, like, big open viewing area. You're either going into the building, or you get, like, this one, or two panel, uh, small glass viewing area over to the left of the build, or I guess the right of the building if you're walking at the entrance of it. Um, but yeah, so I, I felt like that was kind of a cool idea. It kind of makes it a bit easier to uh, keep them like separated so they don't look like they're right next to each other while also kind of making the park a bit compact. I don't know, I think it worked out really well and I, I was kind of proud of it. I was like, oh, this is kind of clever. Good job, me. Um, but yeah, as for the building, we've got two sections or three sections, right? Four, actually, thinking about it now. Uh, we have the main visitor area, so that's got the, the viewing into the out, uh, outdoor section and into the viewing habitat of the indoor area. We got the indoor viewing habitat. We have the shelter area, or the private shelter, where there's no ways to really see inside of it. And finally, we have like a zookeeper section. Also, I, I know like it's no longer, the camera's no longer showing it, but you know what, we're, we're just going with it. Anyway, uh, my solution to the problem here of not but not wanting this exhibit to be right next to it was to build another one of these big planter walls. Um, and this bit took a lot more time than I thought it would because I had to keep, I kept like reshaping it and then changing the location of it to fit with other things. Basically, long complicated process, but I think it resulted in a pretty pretty cool build overall. We get like this cool larger one right at the front where I end up putting in a daffosaur skeleton and then we get like a bunch of plants on it. I haven't I'm, I'm considering putting a small tree or like an overhanging bush on top of it, but I haven't done any of that yet, so we'll get around to that if I if I feel like it. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with this area because I don't know, it just, I feel like it really just naturally kind of gets everything to kind of flow together much better. And it makes the weird little planters we had on the Pachycephalosaur exhibit 
look way way better because it looks like they fit now. Like it's not just this weird little thing we did to try and cap the exhibit off. It's a common thing we're doing throughout the rest of the park, and I, I felt like that worked really well. But yeah, I'm, I'm rambling a lot about planters, which is a bit odd for me, but also sounds like a very me kind of thing to do, you know? You know? Um, as for the terrain in this exhibit, it's pretty similar to the last one. It's pretty flat overall, because, I don't know, especially for like a more of a wetlands build, I felt like it would kind of make sense that it would be a bit more of a flat terrain. You know, like it's, it's not going to be super hilly or anything like that, so I felt like this made sense. Um, this is actually, I think, also the first exhibit where I've done a proper rock wall, which is kind of funny. Also, I finally remembered in, for this build, uh, well, I, I'm putting iron bars here first, but I finally remembered I have Zawa. I have chain link fence, so I, I do replace the iron bars here in a second with, uh, yep, I'm doing it right now, uh, with the chain link fence, which I am happy with, and I might actually go do that on the Pachycephalosaur exhibit as well, because uh, I feel like, I feel like the chain link fence looks better and makes a bit more sense, you know? It's not these, like, big raw iron bars. It's, oh, a chain link fence that most zoos would have for an animal of that size. And I feel like that actually makes more sense with the pachycephalosaurs as well, because they're, like, uh, they're animals that r would ram into something. So I feel like if it's going to have a fence that, hypothetically, it might charge, something like chain link might be a bit better, because that's going to, you know, that's going to cave a bit if the animal hits it, which might be better than, you know, it just hitting something and, like, ricocheting off and hit like hitting another object i don't know you guys could probably give me your opinion on that in the comments i don't know why you would but anyway uh for the shelter we're doing we've done the same kind of concrete uh weathered concrete build i've done in the 1.16 zoo constantly and that's just because it's a really good look i think you know it it works well it's got lots of texture it looks like these cool you know super weathered buildings and i don't know i really like the look of it um, we're just building some like skylights into it. So that larger rectangle, that's the interior view area, I guess. I don't really know what to call it. The, the indoor section, I guess. Although both are indoor sections, so I don't really know. I don't know. Words are hard. Um, but yeah, anyway, as I think we're working on the, uh, the decoration of the interior now. Yeah, so, well, I'm building a rock wall real quick and then onto trees. So we do a lot of custom trees here, the same ones we did in the Pachycephalosaur exhibit, and then the usual uh, stick trees. I've Or stick, the fence, the fence post trees. That's what they're called. Uh, mostly because they look really good and they're easy to build. And they don't take up tons of space. You can put a couple of them in as well. But yeah, we're just kind of throwing some light decorations down. Um, I may have gone a bit over the top with the plants in this one. Uh, and I think that's going to happen for a couple of exhibits, just as I kind of get back into the swing of making proper dino exhibits. So, you know, trying to remember, oh yeah, this is too many decorations, not enough decorations, and trying to find a good balance in between. That being said, I, you know, again, this being a bit more of a wetlands exhibit, I felt like having a few more trees and plants kind of made sense. It's meant to be a bit more of an overgrown area than, uh, like, the temperate forest areas are, so... I don't know. I feel like it works. You guys can let me know if there's too many trees or plants or if I should kind of chill with that a bit. But uh, yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with this build. Um, I don't really feel like I have too much more to say about the construction of it. So I'm going to let the rest of time lapse play out and then I will uh, catch back up with you guys to show off the final build.
All right, everybody, and here we are with the final build. And uh, one quick thing I want to show off, uh, or I guess a couple quick things. I don't really remember what it was I did since the last video. Um, but one thing I definitely know I did, because I just built this, is uh, I added a Diplodocus skeleton into the center of this flower area, because I thought that'd be a cool one. And I don't know, I built all these little supports going into it, because... I don't know, it felt like they made some sense to throw in there, and uh, I feel like it looks kind of cool. So yeah. Anyway, we've also got this, which is a building, which is yet, but we'll soon have a purpose when I get around to building it. However, this is our Adaphosaurus exhibit from the outside, and I really like this. We got a little Adaphosaurus skeleton, which also means I might try and throw a Pachycephalosaurus skeleton over here somewhere. Not sure where exactly yet, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really happy with how these planters turned out. I think I think this was a cool idea of, well, A, making it so you can't see into the, the exhibit from here. So, you know, it kind of makes it, you know, like this is just the entrance exhibit. And then we have another build over here that you have to walk a bit further to see. So it's not just two exhibits right off the bat kind of thing. Um, I think it also just works really well as decoration because why not? And it makes those make more sense and look slightly better now that there's more of them anyway 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 um walking over here uh i added a bunch more of the smooth stone slabs to the roof and it looks all right i still think the roof is a bit iffy um but we'll kind of just have to tinker with that more uh in the future and kind of figure out how it's going to work still don't really know um but going up here of course um Looks pretty cool. Didn't do an interior yet, and that, that includes with the shelter. Uh, mostly just because I'm running out of time, once again, as always. But, oh, this is the first time I've actually got to see it with shaders. And it, I have to say, I, I really like this. I think this exhibit turned out really, really well. Um, I'm very happy with it. Also, I've just suddenly noticed the leaves aren't moving with the shaders. Must be something up with that. I'll figure that out later. Uh, but yeah, we got pretty good viewing from the inside of the building here. Of course, later on, we'll throw benches and little information signs and whatnot in here. And then we've got the interior area for the Adaphosaurs. So I'm thinking, actually, if we quickly just go outside and fly around real quick to the unfinished zookeeper section. What I'm thinking is we're going to do something pretty similar to a... Uh, uh, well, I guess the best example would be in the Alex's Mob Zoo or the 1.16 Zoo. Uh, for our Komodo Dragons, we have a big outdoor area, but then we also have a decently sized indoor area that has like... Oh, oh no. Okay, no, no, no. You know what? Let's see. I think I have a net I can get real quick. Yep, there we go. All right. Didn't want to do that. Um, But uh, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, we got a really cool, like, large indoor space for Komodo dragons and that, uh, so we'll probably put a couple rocks in here, some fallen trees, some leaves, some plants, really try to make this, like, a cool indoor area, because then, you know, it could be like, oh, well, say it's winter and these guys don't do, or, like, a particularly cold day and the adaptors wouldn't do super well out in their enclosure, you know, we can kind of throw them in here and let them, you know, have a bit of a better time, I guess. Uh, this side is mostly done, just because this would be more of like, the, you know, this is where all the mud they're tracking in is, and this is kind of where they're more meant to sleep, since it's a bit more private. Uh, but then, yeah, we've got the actual exhibit itself. Um, I think the only thing I've changed since then is, A, I switched the biome over to a swamp one, uh, which I thought looked super cool. Uh, I really like the color change, and uh, threw in some hay bales for them to eat. It would be really nice if I had some sort of and maybe I'll just actually get like a different texture for it. I can probably do that pretty easy. But I'm thinking... Oh, whoops. That, that's why I wasn't... Uh, oh yeah, by the way, I do have the prehistoric fauna mod. Uh, I haven't really used too much of it yet because I haven't gone through all the plants yet. Ah, uh, there they are. The Paleoraphae leaves. I'm thinking of trying to make this into a hay bale block to kind of... Oh no, I accidentally deleted the Adaphosaur. We'll spawn a new one in. Oh wait, no, I did put it back. Never mind. Okay, phew. Um, but I'm thinking of making like a paleo bale from JPOG, which, I don't know, I feel like that'd be kind of cool. But uh, yeah, anyway, that is that. And then we got our second smaller viewing area over here. 
Um, I'm thinking I might put a shade up over this one, but on the other hand, it might also just be fine to leave this as a small viewing window. It's not really meant to be the main way you're supposed to see him anyway, and it's kind of more just like a side attraction with uh, whatever's going to be going on out here. Well, yeah, anyway, that is all for today. I think I'm, I'm pretty proud of how this exhibit turned out. Like this, I, I think this is really cool. I, I'm really happy with this build overall. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think of it in the comments down below. Let me know what animals you'd like to see for next episode. And until next time, guys. See ya.